Okay, turn. Boink. In this video, I'm not only going to show you how to add and manipulate the warp stabilizer effect in Premiere Pro, but I'm also going to show you how the effect is impacted by your camera settings, such as 4K versus 1080, a wide shot versus a zoomed in shot, low frame rate versus high frame rate, in-camera stabilization versus no in-camera stabilization, and then low aperture or blurry background versus high aperture or deep depth of field. All right, so the first thing you need to know is that Warp Stabilizer is not going to fix really shaky footage. For example, this clip right here, I purposely filmed really shaky, and no matter what settings I mess with now, Warp Stabilizer will not be able to make this clip usable. Warp Stabilizer is really meant to help with minor shakes and micro jitters. Anything more than that in your footage will really start to look warpy and wobbly, which is often worse looking than the shaky footage that you started with. Okay, so to add Warp Stabilizer, you have to go over to your effects over here. If you don't see it, then you might see it up here to click on effects, which will open this up, or go over to window and click on effects here. Then when you click on effects, this drop down will come up, go to video effects, and then go down to distort, and you'll see Warp Stabilizer right there, or you can just type in up here, Warp, and select Warp Stabilizer, and then just click and drag it onto the clip that you want. So I'm gonna choose this one right here, once you drag it on, you'll see this analyzing background step one of two pop up. And if you're using 4K footage, which I have right here, then it'll take a lot longer, but you can see the percentage going through right here and the time remaining. And if you're using 1080 footage, it'll go a lot faster, obviously. When it's done, you'll see the blue analyzing strip change to orange and say stabilizing, which means the effect has been applied. So before we actually start messing with our settings over here, let's just take a look at what this clip right here looks like with Warp Stabilizer, just the basic drag and drop effect on it and without. So I'm gonna unclick this and this is what the original clip looked like. So it's not very shaky, just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of handheld shake there and that's it. And then once we put Warp Stabilizer back on, you can see this is what it looks like. So it smooths out those micro jitters quite well. But if we look at this next clip, I'll do the same thing. This is a very similar shot. So I'm gonna take Warp Stabilizer off this one as well. And you can see that this one was a much shakier shot. So I kind of shook this one a little bit more than the other one. And then now watch, when I put Warp Stabilizer back on, you can see that this one has that really warbly, wobbly effect and it just looks terrible. Which means that one of the most important things you need to do to make sure you get good results for Warp Stabilizer is to make sure your original shot is not shaky to begin with, like I said before. All right, now let's take a look at what settings we can change over here under Warp Stabilizer. Starting with, under Stabilization here, Results. So you can choose Smooth Motion, which is the default, or you can change it to No Motion. Now, No Motion is supposed to be like tripod, like it's not gonna move at all, so it's, you're gonna see it re-stabilizing there. And if I push play, you can see it's even more still. But you can see in the background, sometimes on that one, it creates kind of a fake wobbly in the background as well, kind of this weird, like depth of field kind of weird thing that's happening back there that doesn't look natural. I've never found that that one works very well, so my tendency is just to leave it on smooth motion. The next one is smoothness here, and you can drop this down and see this slider. And basically all this is, if you notice that when we unclick Warp Stabilizer, you can see that it kind of jumps out. It's the, This is the full size of the clip, and when I put it back on, it kind of crops in a little bit. It has to do that to help stabilize the shot. So here you can adjust that. So, and you can see auto scale right here. This 4K clip has only been auto scaled up 101.7%, so not very much at all. But let's look under smoothness here. If I move this to the left, then it's gonna be less smooth. It's gonna smooth it out a little bit less than it did before. And you can see that that auto scale will probably drop down a little bit because it doesn't need to crop in as much as it did before. So vice versa, if I crank this up to smooth it out even more, it'll be more similar to what it was under no motion. And you can see that the auto scale jumped up a little bit percentage wise as well. So if I let's watch the difference between these. So this would be super smooth, 90%. So you can see that there's some of that background messiness again. If I crank this all the way down to like, let's say 9% and we watch it again, you can see that it's gonna be more shaky like the original clip, but still pretty good. I, I tend to go with something lower in this range anyway, and then 
50% is what the automatic like default is when you drag it in and that's what that looks like. So mess around with your smoothness for how much you actually want it to be smoothed out. I tend to find the lower is better. The next thing we can change is method and if you click on this drop down there's four options and basically these just apply a greater stabilization. Each of them is just like a step up. So if you go to the first one, it's only gonna be messing with the position of the clip. So if we go up here, kind of like this position. So it's gonna move it left, right, up and down to try and stabilize it and nothing else. So if I click position and we watch, you can see that that's gonna just move it around and not mess with anything else. Then the next one is position, but now it's gonna mess with scale and rotation as well. So it might, you know, twist it or zoom it in a little bit and that's kind of this one and this one right here. So if we watch that one, that'll apply a little bit more stabilization, uh, a few other parameters than the first ones. And then the next one up is perspective. So that adds the, uh, like kind of the depth of field, I think, to it, or it kind of pins the four corners, I think, is what that one's supposed to do. And if we click on that one, that's just kind of the next level up. And then the one that it comes as the default is the full subspace warp, which does position, scale, rotation, pins the corners like perspective and warps it as it needs it to try and stabilize. So that's like the full fledge, like all hands on deck, try and stabilize it the most. And to be honest, there's no real answer for which one is best. Usually I just try them out and see which one I think looks better. But most of the time, I don't even really notice that much of a difference between them. As far as preserve scale goes, I'm not really sure what it does. I think it depends on which one of these methods that you pick, how much preserve scale impacts it. But every time I've clicked it, I don't really know. It kind of bumps out there and then it kind of bumps back in a little bit. I'm not really sure exactly what it does. The next set of things we can change is under borders, starting with framing, and there's a drop down here again that has kind of four more options, and they do the same thing as what this one did, where they kind of scale up the intensity with each one. So the default is stabilize, crop, and auto scale. So we've kind of seen that with all of them, but let's look at one at a time. So if I go stabilize only, you can see that it didn't crop in, right? It didn't crop in or auto scale anything here so we see these like this black border just on two edges but if we watch it through you can see it kind of bounces around because it's kind of trying to stabilize the flower in the middle here or this the weed i guess and the rest of the background doesn't matter it's trying to move that around to kind of keep this stabilized so that's what that first one does if you want to choose that one and you don't want those edges, you can also go here to additional scale and just scale it up yourself if you want. I'm gonna put that back to 100 so we can see the other ones. Next would be stabilize and crop. So if we click on that one, you're gonna see that Premiere is gonna add a border all the way around so we don't see it jump around this time, but it didn't, it didn't scale it up. It didn't zoom in a bit. It just cropped out the edges so it could move it around a little bit. And on a 4K one like this, if the auto scale isn't that much, it's not going to crop off that much. It's gonna be a little bit less. The more shaky your footage is, so if I went to this one and I went down here and I tried to go here to framing and just stabilize and crop, you're gonna notice that the borders are gonna be a lot bigger because it's got more room to crop because it's moving things around a lot more. It's gotta crop in a lot more. If you look back on stabilize only on that one, you're gonna see that black box just jump around like crazy in those corners. So that's why it's important to stabilize your footage as much before you film as possible so you can mess around with these settings and not have kind of crazy effects. Again, on this one, this would be if you want the border, but if you really wanted to, you could go and just auto scale it up the same way you did the other one too. The third option in here is stabilize crop and auto scale, which is the default when we drag warp stabilizer onto a clip. And obviously we've seen that one already. So that will stabilize it and then crop to put those borders on and then it'll auto scale. So zoom it in a little bit to get rid of the borders. The last one is stabilize and synthesize edges. Again, I'm not exactly sure what this one does, but it just does a little bit more, I guess, right? So it's taking a lot longer here to stabilize, and I don't know if you can hear, but my computer is going crazy right now, so obviously my computer does not like that one, so I'm going to avoid that one because it seems to be wanting to explode my computer. As far as auto scale goes, we've kind of already talked about this a little bit. This is basically how much warp stabilizer this effect will zoom in your footage or scale up your footage depending on what you've chosen for let's say smoothness, method, and framing. 
But if you click this little drop down, there's two kind of scales that we can mess with here. The first one being maximum scale percentage. So if you're worried about your footage being really shaky and you don't want the auto scale to go too much because then it crops it in too much, it zooms it in too much, then just drop this down and say, you know what, I just want maximum, let's say, 115. So if you have to go any more than that, then I don't want you to crop my footage in any more than that, like zoom it in anymore. And you can see here, it didn't really change mine because mine's only at 101.7 here. So it didn't affect anything because it's higher than what the auto scale was. But if this was at 120 and I put this maximum scale to 115, then this would drop to 115. And then action safe margin here, this is just, if we crank this up, it just adds a little bit of a border, uh, kind of similar to within framing here, what would happen in stabilize and crop here. And then for additional scale, we've also talked about that one, and that's just if you're looking at this and you're like, ah, the auto scale didn't do what I wanted, then you can just scale up or down depending on what you like. But just be aware that if you're using 4K footage like I am, then you can scale your footage up a lot more without losing resolution than you can if you're using 1080. If you're using 1080 footage, I honestly wouldn't scale it up past 1, like 25 at the max. But the best way to do it would probably be to set this back to 100 and change your maximum scale to 125 instead. And then last but not least, let's take a look at what Advanced has to offer down here. So the big one here is detailed analysis. So if you click on this, then it's gonna do more analyzing. It's gonna go through that same process. If we go back up here, it's gonna go through it again. And this time it's gonna take a lot longer. It's gonna really go through and analyze each frame in more detail. Once it's done, it's gonna do the exact same thing and stabilize like it did before. And you can see that it changed the auto scale a little bit, which cropped it in a little bit more, zoomed it in a little bit more than it did before. And if we watch it, you're not really gonna notice but it does tend to do a better job just slightly than when you don't click it. Next we have rolling shutter ripple and rolling shutter is like when you move your camera kind of back and forth, it creates kind of that jello effect in the background, which is very similar to what we see in the background of this one here, that kind of jello effect. So let's see if there's any real difference between enhanced reduction. So that was this one, enhanced reduction, and I'll go back and let's see what automatic reduction looks like. We'll see if there's any difference between the two and I'm looking at it and it doesn't really seem like there's much of a difference. The last thing that we can change in Warp Stabilizer is this crop less, smooth more slider right here, which is basically the same as this smoothness slider up here, but it's under advanced now. So when we slide it this way, it's gonna crop less, but it's also gonna smooth less as well. So once it's done stabilizing over here, we'll watch it. So that's what that one would look like. So not as much warbly, wobbly mess in the background. And if we look up top, it's only auto scaled, like zoomed in 105. But if we go the opposite way and go up to in the 90s and watch that one, you can see that it's 105.8. And if you notice in this case, the difference between 10 and 93 wasn't that much of a difference in terms of how it looked in your video. But that's because I think it's just refining what we chose for smoothness up here. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about Warp Stabilizer in terms of the settings within the effect. But for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna show you a little montage here of a bunch of different clips that show you how Warp Stabilizer is affected by different settings in your camera. You okay?
Okay, turn. Alright, so that's all I got for Warp Stabilizer. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.